So this is the POCO F3. Whenever you heard of the brand POCO phone, you might think of a budget gaming phone. Maybe not exactly a dedicated gaming phone, but at least a almost flagship killer phone. With almost all the flagship specs inside that you can literally play every game on it. This year, they're sort of using the same formula on this, the POCO F3. Flagship CPU, tick. It actually runs on the latest, but almost the greatest Snapdragon 870 instead of the absolute flagship Snapdragon 888. But we'll come back to this in a bit, as the Snapdragon 870 is actually a further overclocked Snapdragon 865 Plus with arguably better thermals than the 888. Flagship cameras tick as well. The 48 megapixels main shooter actually delivers some really promising photos with natural colors and wide dynamic range, but it lacks a periscope zoom lens if you're into that. Flagship display, tick as well. The 6.67 inches display uses E4 AMOLED technology with accurate colors and 1300 nits of peak brightness. It also supports 120Hz of high refresh rate and 360Hz touch sampling rate, which means super smooth scrolling animation and buttery smooth interface and day-to-day -day use experience with super low touch delay. You can basically expect top-of-the-line gaming experience on this POCO F3. We'll definitely test out how it performs in real world in just a moment, but now shall we just check out how it looks from the outside? I must say they've listened to their customers. It actually weighs only 196 grams and with a 7.8 millimeters thickness. Speaking of the glass back, with a matte finish on the glass panel, which feels definitely comfortable in hand, while on the front, the 6.67 inches display uses a flat display. The chin is noticeably thicker than the one on the other three sides. The camera hole punch in the meantime is really tiny. While just right next to the front camera, there is a earpiece, which doubles as the stereo speaker setup. While on the top, other than just the IR blaster, we've also got some speaker grills here to make the sound a little bit more natural. Well, on the bottom side, we've got a Type-C port, a speaker grill as well, and a dual SIM card slot with 5G support, but there is no microSD card slot here, unfortunately. By the way, this phone does support 33W wide charging. Last but not least, on the right-hand side, we've got a side-mounted fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor's got a unfamiliar design as well. It sort of protrudes ever so slightly. Well, I can just touch to unlock. In addition, it's got a NFC chip inside for Google Pay support. In general, it's a thin and light smartphone with almost all flagship components inside. It just doesn't feel like the same as when I'm holding the S21 Ultra, maybe just because of the weight distribution, the weight itself, and the general curve, or maybe the build quality as well but purchasing one of these can actually get you three to four of these. Now move on to the performance and special features. The Snapdragon 870, it is actually a further overclocked Snapdragon 865 Plus. It uses the same CPU clusters with one prime core clocked at 3.2 gigahertz based on Cortex A77 architecture and three other big cores at 2.42 gigahertz and finally four other cores at 1.8 gigahertz. Now, not only is it based on the last gen Cortex A77 architecture, but also seven nanometer manufacturing process as well. Wait, does it mean it is totally out of date? Well, personally, I don't think so. Now I've run Geekbench 5 for five times consecutively. Just look at the graph compared to the S21 Ultra, probably. Phones with the latest and greatest Snapdragon 888 might outperform phones with the latest but not necessarily the greatest 870. But starting from the third run or even the second run, phones that pack the Snapdragon 888 without a dedicated liquid cooling system actually throttles a lot. I mean, a lot. 
it actually underperforms the Snapdragon 870 and 865. The Poco F3 here with liquid cool 1.0 plus technology inside actually handles the heat really well. While I can barely feel if there's any heat produced by the processor on the back of the phone at all. I've run 3 d Mark Slingshot Extreme for five times consecutively. The first time I've got 7910 and then eventually it dropped to 7176, not bad at all. The peak performance here on the Snapdragon 870 might not be as good as that on the Snapdragon 888, but over the course, eventually the Snapdragon 870 actually outperforms the Snapdragon 888 after being pushed for a relatively long time. Now just imagine if you play games a lot, like League of Legends Wild Rift, one game can actually last you for half an hour, or maybe you should flock on a phone under the sun in summer. You can expect really stable and reliable performance on system based on Snapdragon 870. Now for hardcore gamers, just dig a little bit deeper in the settings menu, special features, then game turbo. The game turbo feature here basically gets you performance mode, which you would expect. But now it's really interesting that when we go into the additional settings here, We've got touch resistant area as well, which we can adjust from non small, medium to large, and enhanced visuals as well. Then, when you're in the game, just pull the button here from the left top corner. We've got some floating windows icons here, which we can just float another app on top of your game, like Facebook and WhatsApp. Then we've got a screen recording mode as well. We've even got voice changer here. Anyway, as a budget, game-friendly phone, you might not expect a great camera system on this phone as well. The Poco F3 actually packs three camera lenses there with a 48 megapixels main shooter, an ultra-wide angle lens with 119 degrees of field of view, and a tele macro lens with 3 cm to 7 cm super close super macro lens. Now, what exactly impressed me isn't how many megapixels it's got, but actually it is the image processing. Xiaomi's definitely put their high end image signal processing algorithm to this Poco F3. The colors are actually natural, especially when I take photos of the flowers. As you can see, the red, the yellow and white, probably green as well, all the colors are rendered perfectly natural. Now, if you're into night photography, the Poco F3 has got you covered as well. So basically, the Night Mode 2.0 will get you support for night mode on both the wide and ultra wide angle lens. So technically speaking, I mean, in the real world, the Poco F3 actually shoots flagship tier night photography. It basically takes flagship tier photo in both daylight and nighttime, unless you're into long range zoom. Alright, before we wrapping up this review is the battery life. Now based on the standardized battery life test, which I've watched YouTube video with 50% of brightness for an hour, one hour of Facebook scrolling and one hour of League of Legends Wild Rift gameplay. So, the design is sort of high-end looking, with a thin and relatively light profile. The build quality is good, but not as great as 
probably the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra as you'd expect. The display is perfect with Samsung E4 AMOLED display technology here and 120Hz display refresh rate and a 360Hz of touch sampling rate only if it's a 1440p 2K display. The dual speaker setup's also perfect as well with Dolby Atmos support. And last but not least, the Snapdragon 870 processor. The peak performance that it delivers is not as high as the Snapdragon 888, probably. But in the long run, due to the better thermals here, the Poco F3 actually runs much, much cooler than the Mi 11. The CPU and GPU doesn't throttles at all, almost. Now considering the price, if you can bear with the slightly downgraded build quality compared to the absolute flagship models, the lack of 2K WQHD plus resolution on the display, and a lack of a periscope zoom lens, as well as 67 watt super fast charging, which the also highly affordable Xiaomi Mi 11 offers, the Poco F3 will be a even more affordable option for you. Alright, so this is the end of my video. Hope you all enjoyed watching this and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and share it to your friends as well. See you all next time.